Well, what's going on you guys? I'm Mitchell Mitchell's Lawn Care. Welcome back to the channel. Today is all about the right ZK here behind me and the right vac. There's no secrets because uh, you know it's always given away in the title. Uh, but anyways, so today I'm going to show you step by step how to install the right vac on your ZK. All right, but anybody that knows me knows that uh, I got to get my stuff cleaned up before I put something shiny and new on it. So I'm going to get this thing cleaned up. I'm not going to bore you with that and uh, then we'll get this party started. All right, before we get the mower cleaned up, I want to show you this thing. So here it is. This is the right vac. Same one that goes on the ZXT. They have outfitted it and equipped it to where it will go on the ZK. Alrighty. So this is a three bin design. I know it's here in the palette. It's kind of hard to make out, but there's been one, two, and three. Alrighty. And then all the bells and whistles and everything needed to put this on the ZK. So this being the uh, adapter piece right here that goes on to the back of the ZK, all right, that everything is going to mount to. Then you've got your plates for the front. You got plates that go on the deck to keep everything uh, nice and level and weighed down to where it's supposed to be. Because you know, when you get grass in these things, it gets heavy on the tail end and you don't wanna be riding wheelies everywhere, okay? so. This has been here in the shop for a few weeks now, and I finally got the opportunity to get this thing put on the ZK. So I'm gonna show you how to put this thing on the mower. All right, so that's a quick walk around of the right vac. Obviously when I get it put on, you're gonna see it in all its glory. But my ZK here is awfully nasty. It's been a busy season, haven't had an opportunity to get this thing cleaned up like I normally do. You can see it's got that black gunk all over the front of it. But anyways, I'm going to get this thing cleaned up. Not gonna bore you with that, so let's just skip to it. And just like that, she's all clean, thanks to Super Clean. So before I get started, I've gotta get the Kubota out of the shop. I've got to get the mower in, rearrange some things, get the tools ready, get the instructions ready. And then it'll be time to put this thing on. And I have no idea what I'm getting myself into. I'm hoping it's gonna be an easy process, but we're gonna do it together. That way, if you buy the right vac and you're gonna put it on your ZK yourself and not the dealer, you'll know exactly what to do. So if I run into some issues, you'll see. Uh, if it's a breeze, you'll see. Let's vote for the latter part, okay? I do wanna say something. This is a lot of weight to put on this mower. I personally, I don't know yet. I haven't seen this system on a ZK with twills. I have a feeling this is gonna to be too much weight for the twills. If that's the case, I do have the stock rim and tire setup that came on this mower, so I will have to put those back on. But I'm interested to see how, um, I'm interested to see how these twills are gonna hold up. Uh, mine are not brand new, they're two, three years old, so we all know that, um, you know, things age over time and things get softer over time. So uh, I'm interested to see if these twills will hold up because as you can see right here, hopefully, um, if the light will adjust, but you get some compression at the bottom side of these twills already, okay? And the more that these twills compress, the more it throws your deck level off, okay? And your, and your cut height. So I am fully expecting this kit on here to compress these twills even more to the point to where I'm probably gonna have to pull them off but not a deal breaker okay so let's start getting the assist bleh, the assist spring installed I've already removed the uh, catcher um, bracket the, the little uh, catcher bag bracket so um, you've got to raise the mower deck into its transport position okay as high as it'll go and support the mower deck uh, it says support it with blocks. I don't have any blocks, so uh, I've got my floor jack here underneath the, the deck applying pressure up because you've got to take off um, this trim side deck lift bolt right here. Okay, so that's what we're going to do right now. Save all these parts. You never know. You may need them later.
Because when tightening, leave about a quarter inch of space between the washer and the inner nut. All right, so let's take this down. Again, this is all three quarter. So you've got an inner nut right here that's gonna go up against this spacer. That all needs to be tight. When tightening, leave about a quarter inch of space between the washer, so between the washer and the inner nut. Now I can let the jack back down. Everything should be fine, set back in place. All right, now time to take off the rear wheel. You don't have to jack this mower way up in the air. It's just gotta be just enough to get the wheel off. Set it aside. Now, like I said, I've already taken off the, uh, the uh, collection bag. So now remove the nut from the trim side hydro hose clamp. That's going to be a half inch. This is the spring assist bracket right here, okay? So this little hole right here is going to go where that nut we just took, took out on the uh, hose clamp bracket uh, bolt. And then there is a square right here for the bolt to go through. There's already a hole right there, okay? It's as if Fright Manufacturing knew this was going to come years later. And be careful while you're doing this guys like these these standards we love them because they're compact but when you go to wrench on them they're compact so there's a lot of stuff in a small place so be careful and you know don't go busting your knuckles wear work gloves if you want i uh prefer not to this is your eye bolt right here put it back through put your other nut on so you want to hook this between and I told you that I might have to adjust it and I do so I need to take it out a little bit more okay and you want enough room for this spring to get in there just like so okay so work smarter not harder so look there it all is you could even tighten that a little bit if you wanted to. A little bit snug. There it all is. And then it's just a matter of tightening this. Tighten it down. And guys, that is the assist spring. But there you go. So remember we took off this bolt, put the new one in, got the spring all in, the new bracket. So this is the new assist spring because we're gonna be putting more weight on this deck. So this is just to help you lift the deck. All right, deck of spring is on. Now we're gonna to move to putting the bracket on the back of the ZK. All right, you guys, so here you can see the uh, rear platform adapter that's got a hook onto the back of the ZK, but the first instructions are to remove the bolts attaching the rear fuel tank mount brackets to the tractor and discard. So this piece right here, these brackets right here are your rear fuel tank, rear, yeah, rear fuel tank mount brackets. And there's a 9 nut on each one of these two bolts. I hope you can see that right there, okay? So, I've got to remove those. And for that, I am going to use a little impact wrench just to remove these. Platform plugs are supplied with the kit. That's going to go right in here in these little holes. Okay. Get them in there however you can. Obviously, the anti scap wheels are the wheels on the back. All right. So put your little plugs in. So take out your bolts black washer supplied they will go on the outside in between the plug and your anti-scalp wheel okay so 
So this is going to slide in here just like so. So there's, there's three different size of these carriage bolts, okay? Uh, there's two that are just a shade longer. There's, there's four of these short ones, four of that are, I don't know, maybe quarter inch bigger, and then two that are a little bit bigger than that. So I put the two that were the biggest by themselves down at the bottom. This would help with the instructions if it would tell you where to put um, each bolt. But it doesn't, so we're gonna do the best we can. Um, as you can see from the installation of it, I don't know, I may have sped it up and you didn't see it, but um, the instructions are a little vague at this point and it says, attach platform adapter to the tractor using the hardware provided, and that's it. There's a lot of hardware, okay? So as you can see here, that's what's left over and I'm not even done yet. So there was four, five, six different size bolts and the instructions don't tell you um, which bolts to use. So letting you know what I did so you can get through this, okay? There are eight of these little carriage bolts, two or four this size, four a little bit bigger those are the four that I used on the top for the fuel tank bracket okay and then there are two by themselves two that are bigger than that I used those on the bottom here in the plugs okay with these washers so that leaves me with these four smaller ones that I believe we're going to use when we get to number eight install the left and right tension support plates okay that's why I'm doing this video so we can all get through this together because not everybody's gonna have a dealer do this for them so far it's been an easy installation uh, uh, first little hiccups were uh, my own fault by not reading the instructions um, second one little vague on the instructions but let me show you this so you can see it all but this is the rear platform for which the bagging system way over there is gonna mount to all right let's go on to the next steps next up is to install the receiver weldment onto the platform extension okay this is the receiver weldment that the bagger system attaches to okay so you're going to be using two of the longest carriage bolts supplied in the hardware kit along with two of the 9 16 flange lock nuts okay so this is really easy it's open here on the back side that's going to go over that just like so line your holes up put your bolts through from the outside in Now, there's nothing in the instructions that state anything about it being up higher or whatever, but there is a little bit of adjustment here uh, in the hole, okay? So it's not just a dead square, it's a re rectangle. So there is some adjustment up and down, just a hair. But for the sake of this installation and it not saying any differently in the instructions, I'm gonna mount it with it resting on top of this platform extension. Next up. Install the left and right tension support plates. So there's two different support plates right here, okay? This one has two holes. It's gonna line up with your bracket over here on the right side. It's got two holes in it, okay? Go to the outside of the fuel tank bracket and the inside of your uh, receiver weldment. All right, now, as I stated before, there was one little hiccup in my opinion that the instructions were just a little bit vague as far as not telling you which exact bolts to use. But it looks like I have selected the right ones because there are five 
of these smaller little carriage bolts, okay? And if you look right here on these tension support plates, there's five holes. One, two, three, four, five, and there's five bolts, okay? So the smallest carriage bolts are gonna go for your tension support plates. Now, something I've just noticed, the hole's not lining up, so I'm going to loosen these bolts for the receiver weldment to give me some flexibility so everything will line up and then I will tighten it down. The shorter one, you can't block this. See how this one goes over here on the right side? You have to leave an, an in and out, you as the operator. All right, you guys, so the platform and receiver weldment has been attached to the back of the ZK. Next up, we're going to put the, I'm trying to use all the correct terms for this, the bagger lid frame assembly onto the receiver weldment with the help of my trusty sidekick, Hannah, who's not been on the channel here in a while, but she's here in the background, okay? Just uh, uh, catching you up, I know you've been following along, but we've got the rear platform on, the receiver weldment the lid and frame for the bagger okay and we just dropped in the three bins so we'll go right here lift up and that's how you get them out so and the first thing that we did was the deck lift assist spring so we're almost there and without looking at the instructions obviously We've got to hook up the tube and the blower assembly. The quick um, shoot cover, quick shoot blocker has got to come off. So if you had a regular shoot there, grass flap, anything that you have on the deck has got to come off. Okay, because you've got to mount your blower assembly. And then we've got to mount on the front the weights with the front hitch. So here's some of the weights right there. And then on the left side of the deck, AKA trim side, we've got some plates of weight to put there also so we're not done yet but we are getting there and the issue with the twills i think is already starting to come true because just with this here on the back you can see that it's already pancaking this twill more than what it was so and there's still lots more weight to put on this mower so we'll get it all done first and then we'll see how these twills are holding up but I believe my opinion that it's going to be too much will come true which is okay because I've got the stock uh, rim and tire set up for this thing we'll just put them on there but anyways let's get the I believe the blower assembly is next so let's get the blower pulley assembly and all that stuff mounted up all right, you guys, so this video may seem a little choppy, but I'm having to do this install in uh, over a few days time frame. Okay, so I prepped them over to do a complete install, but I ran out of time. Life happens. Okay, um, this install is going to take you a few hours. Okay, especially just one person, but um, I've got the uh, rear portion of the bagger um, installed already. Okay, which you've already seen. Um, and I've got to get the deck pull the deck covers off. I've got to get the front hitch off. I've got to get the chute blocker off. Okay, I'm not going to bore you with all that stuff. All right, um, I have already made the modification to the center pulley. Um, that's required and and, and uh, mentioned in the instructions. Okay, so I will show you that. Um, but I had to kind of put this thing back together uh, to to go mow uh, over the last two weeks. So uh, again, if it seems uh, choppy, I do apologize. Um, but so I'm not going to bore you with taking all this stuff off. All right. Just going to fast forward and get to that part. All right, you guys. So I've got my shoot blocker off. I've got the front hitch off, took the pulley covers off, and I've already removed the discharge side 
blade, okay? So I've done all that stuff, okay? Simple enough, you know how to do that. Now, like I told you, I have already made the modification to the center pulley based on the instructions, okay? And I'm gonna show you that now. All right, you guys, so the nut for the idler pulley is a 9 16 A little trick, you're gonna have to come from underneath it with a little open-ended wrench and then loosen it with your ratchet. And per the instructions, so we have to pull all of this off. All right, is that a washer too? Yep, okay. So there's a whole stack of washers right here and spacers, okay? You see that? So I'm not counting them, but there they are. And then this spacer. So it says two, then the spacer. All right. And then put your pulley back on. All right. And then your five spacers. So in essence, you're lowering your idler pulley. All right. Now, again, a little tricky. go all right you guys so simple enough on the center pulley now I do need to get this off um, the belts off loosen so I can get this discharge side pulley off because we have to install this um, stacked or this dual pulley system okay because there's a belt that's going to go on the top of this that will drive the blower um, for the back the right back okay so I'm gonna dive in to getting this pulley off and separate it from the hub. You're gonna need a 7 tenth, 7 16 socket to get these little um, nuts off, okay, and to, or these bolts off, and to separate it from the hub. So let's do that now. You guys, it's really simple. Just use your half inch socket right here, put it in that little hole that's already there. You're gonna crank it to the right. All right, crank it to the right. That's gonna release the tension on the belt and slide the belt off. All right, you'll, the holes that it come out of, you'll see another set of holes. That's where you need to put the bolts in to separate the pulley from the hub. Now, when you're doing this, do them in unison with one another. I do about a quarter half turn on each and it's slowly pushing that pulley or separating that pulley from the hub. And just like that. Now, you do need to take these bolts back out. Because you're going to reuse these bolts. All right, you guys, so this is the hub. You've got to get this thing off, okay? And it is not going to come off. And if you don't have like a hub puller, um, what I'm gonna do is take a flathead screwdriver and tap it into this little slot right here which is going to you know open it up and release the pressure on this spindle shaft okay and then i'll be able to lift it right off it shouldn't take much and then look it'll lift right off so you hope All right, you guys, so I was able to get the uh, the hub off of the spindle shaft. Um, there was like a little bit of a burr right here on the top of this um, 
uh, this shaft. So uh, I just use a, a hand grinder and just kind of smooth that off just a little bit. Hopefully you can make that out. And then this hub slid right on off. Okay, now next step is I've got to get the hub installed onto the pulley really easy. Uh, you're just going to hammer this down into it and then put your bolts in and pull it together and then we're going to mount it back over the shaft. All right, you guys, so I got the double pulley installed finally. A little bit of a hiccup, but we got through it. There was a burr on the top of this spindle shaft right here, so I just took a hand grinder and smoothed it off and was able to get the, um, the, the, uh, the hub off, okay? So now on the ZK, this hub is on the bottom, so for uh, this installation, you have to flip the hub around and put it on top. Per the instructions, you have to make sure that the top of this pulley is three inches from the deck, okay? So I made sure to measure it with an actual ruler and not a tape measure because those are super inactive uh, and uh, incorrect, not inactive. They're super incorrect. So used uh, a ruler and I've got the three inch mark on the top. I've already reinstalled the pulley belt. Now, per the instructions, it's time to install the GCS deck adapter from the pulley kit, okay? So it comes with the necessary nuts and bolts and it's gonna mount right here on the side of the deck. Now, here we go. This is the, the heart of it all, I would call it. This is the blower. There is a pin over here on the left side that you need to loosen up so you can put it here on this adapter and then this hook right here is going to go in right here okay now before i get ahead of myself there is a belt tensioner over here on the left side underneath i'm not going to show it to you but there's three settings for the three different deck size 52 60 watt excuse me and 72 so make sure that your belt tensioner is on the, the blower belt tensioner is on the setting for your deck size, okay? This one showed up in the 61 setting. This is the 61 inch deck. Once the belt is installed, then put it over the deck. And then you're gonna use this tilt it forward and now it's mounted up now get everything lined up put your pin in slide over you don't have to be making fun of my crocs now All right, you guys, we are at the point in the installation where we can start adding on the weight kits. I've got the front portion of the weight kit already hanging here. There's little hangers, hooks on the back of it that hangs across the front cross member of your mower. And then I will add the three plates on the back and bolt all of that together with the supplied hardware. Then I will move on to doing the plates on the trim side of the deck. going to take a three quarter inch socket and wrench. All right, you guys, next step in the process is putting the trim side plate weights on. So you've got to get this factory mounted bolt off right here first. And this is going to be a half inch. All right, once you get that bolt off, you're gonna place your weight on here, okay? Line that hole up. Now, this is the only part 
in the whole thing. I'm going to put the supply bolt through it just to keep it lined up for now. This is the only point in the whole instructions or the whole installation where you have got to drill a hole. Okay. So it says right here, use this baffle hole right here for the 61. That's going to be for your 52. All right. Now, um, then it says mark and drill the indicated hole for the weight plate mounting. Okay. So I'm going to mark this outer hole right here and then drill a hole through the deck and then get the bolt put through. Okay. So not going to bore you with that. Just going to do it. All right, you guys, just like that, it is all complete. Thank goodness. This thing's a beast. Can't wait to get the, get this thing out in the field and use it. So last thing that I did was the six plates here on the discharge side. And again, like I said, you only had to drill one hole, put the supplied hardware through, make sure you put the washers in. Now there is a hole back here on the side, but in the instructions, it did not say to utilize that. That could be for the 72 inch deck. Okay. But these are the holes that you utilize for the 52 and the 61. Now, side weight kit, front weight kit, blower, the pulley adjustments were made to the center pulley and the discharge side pulley. We added in the um, tube, the clear tube, and I have put the bins here in the back, okay? Now, if you're getting this system for the ZK here, obviously that's why you're tuning in and you're wanting to know how to install this thing, or maybe, um, you know, maybe you've gotten into a little bit of a snag and you just need some coaching through it. Um, this system is for the ZXT, the ZXL, which is smaller than the ZXT and the ZK. Okay. So there is a little bit of modifications between the, the, the uh, mowers. So you will have some hardware that you do not use. Okay. So if you've got the ZK, these are tension support brackets. So you will get to a point and you'll be like, where in the heck do I put these? You don't. Okay. Because the ZK utilizes a different support system back here on the back because you've got to be able to step through here to get onto your operator platform. Those tension supports are for the ZXT and the ZXL. They would mount here, come down and come across. In essence, you don't need to be able to step through on the back of those ZTRs, okay? This is all done, man. If you guys got any questions, comments, concerns, please let me know. Um, I did um, run into a couple little snags with the discharge pulley, okay? The instructions were a little vague. I've already spoke to Ed about that and they're gonna clarify that. Hopefully they're out by the time um, you go to mount this. Um, but the discharge pulley has got to be mounted um, beneath the uh, hub. So when you, when you see the ZK, the hub's at the bottom, the pulley's on top, you've got to flip that, okay? It does not say that in the instructions, okay? The, Z, the, the instructions are more for the ZXT, ZXL. But anyways, that is the unit. Based on the instructions, uh, it says, with the ZK and this complete system installed, you're looking at a little over, I'm not gonna say the exact poundage because I forgot, but a little over, 1,630 pounds. I think it may have been 1631. Don't quote me, but with everything installed, it's a beast. Okay. Keep that in mind when you go on properties. Now at the beginning of this video, I stated, I'll finish up with this. At the beginning of this video, I was curious and made the, the assumption that this system was going to be, was going to prove too much for the twills. And it is at, at plain sight. It looks okay, but once you add the weight of the operator, and then imagine these three bins being full of grass, which is way heavier than leaves. If those three bins were full of grass, the operator on here, these twills would be even more pancaked than they are right now. But I went even further and I tested the height. I've got the mower deck set at four based on the, the gauge over here on the mower. And when I put the, uh, uh, the, the, cut height gauge under there I'm hitting at three and a quarter inches so this thing is sitting three quarters of an inch lower 
than where it should be. So I'm going to combat that with putting the stock wheels and tires back on here, um, which I can control the air pressure on. And in essence, it should raise this mower back up to where it is supposed to be. If not, I can always adjust the deck. But fingers crossed, putting the pneumatic air tires on the back will fix it. I want to give a huge thanks to Wright Manufacturing, Ed Wright and his team of wizards um, at Wright Manufacturing for making this possible, getting this out to me uh, to show you guys. If you go to pick one of these up, it is a high, high quality um, kit, just like everything you would expect from Wright Mowers. I'm very excited about this. I'm gonna put this thing to work here this fall when leaves start to fall. But anyways, that's it you guys. Like, comment, subscribe, browse the channel. We'll see you next video.